Hello everybody, Bolt Matrix here, and today we're taking a look at the Dino Blast Chariot Series 2 set of figures. I picked these figures up over at SirToys.com. Link is down in the description to take you to the sale page. Now, these figures are quite large. To give you an idea, here is two primes. So we have Studio Series Bumblebee Prime and Earthrise Prime. As you can see, the dinos are pretty much in scale with current leader and Voyager class Transformers. Now, these figures come in two different size classes. We have the larger size class here, which you can get the all of these four for about 80 and then or $80. And then there are there is a smaller set that is sold for $40 that is called the deluxe set. And that's this guy. I have one of them here. He's a lot smaller. So we will get these guys out of the way and take a look at the Ankylosauruses. Ankylosauri, Ankylosaurus. Now it looks like we got a mama dino and a baby dino here. As you can see, the size difference is actually immense. I mean, we're we're talking like a factor of two or even three here. So again, obviously, this is going to be the cheaper one. Now the cheaper one does have a lot less posability, and the transformation is a little bit simpler. But the figures are very, very similar. I'll be reviewing this guy separately in a different video. All right, we'll start off with the Ankylosaurus, and it's a big, old, tanky Ankylosaurus. All of the spines here are nice, tough plastic, though they do have a little bit of bend to them, and they're not sharp, so that's great. The paint on this thing is good, it's even, it's just really well done, and then the eyes have a little beady paint there. The mouth, I expected to be able to open and close, but it really can't because of the transformation. And yeah, it's just really good, beefy, and chunky. Another size comparison, here's Deluxe Class Cyberverse Optimus Prime compared to this thing. I mean, good grief. Like, a Deluxe Class Prime in vehicle mode, specifically. All right. All right, transformation for this guy. First, we come to the tail and we pull the entire tail off. What we're going to do is just grab the figure by the midsection and pull it apart a little bit, then come to the back of the dino mode and split the back open and flip down the robot legs and then fold the dino legs in. And these will flip down and then snap into place, though the uh, snap is not that tight. Then come on to the inside of each leg and flip out the toes and do that on both sides. And it's not the easiest thing to do in the world. You kind of need some nails, but it's not that bad. So turn it so that the toes point forward and that they line up with the hands. All right, next for the head. First, grab the body and just pull the shoulders, or what will be the shoulders, apart like this. And then we can get in there, grab the arm, and just kind of ratchet them out. So there's a ratchet in there. We want to point them out like that, kind of butterfly the shoulders. And grab the dino head, pull it down, snap it into place. And here we have the first of the robot modes. Oh, wait, one thing you can do is twist the shoulders around so that the actual armor bits are pointing forward as opposed, and the legs are pointing behind the figure. And then we can give him his club weapon, which it feels like it should be a spring-loaded weapon, but there's nothing spring-loaded about it, so I kind of treat it like this is actually a club that he should be able to hold, but it doesn't really work, and that this is actually a gun. Now our red Ankylosaurus friend, otherwise known as Dino Red, is pretty tall. It's a pretty tall bot mode. And we'll get into the posability in just a minute. It looks good though. I like it. Head sculpt is pretty good. It is a little bit plain though, though I do appreciate the contrasting colors that they've managed to get. I would have preferred a different color with the eyes, but the white does work for the overall aesthetic of the figure. Posability wise, head is on a swivel. Can't look up or down. Shoulders are on a pair of hinges and ratchets. Bend at the elbow is 
not even 90 degrees, no fist articulation, no torso articulation, legs are on ratchets for forward and back, and hinges for in and out, and the knees do bend, but they bend in the wrong direction. So, yeah. It's a pretty good figure, though I do have to admit he is top-heavy, and these knees are, are too loose, and the swivels are too loose. I have tried tightening the screws here, but that doesn't seem to help much. But then again, this is the type of figure that you're not going to be posing, because he's top-heavy, and I don't really want to try to have him posing in a dynamic form pose that makes him look like he's trying to defeat some bad guys. He just looks cool in his static pose, just pretty much like this. The weapon can be stored on his back using the back screw hole and the peg here, though it's not a very tight fit. It will fall off if you wiggle it too much, but it's good to know that you can at least store the weapon back there. Size-wise, here is the figure next to Leader Class Siege Ultra Magnus and Leader Class Earthrise Optimus Prime. And just for giggles, we'll go ahead and throw in MP10 Prime as well. Now, besides the looseness of the legs and knee, uh, this hinge right here is pretty darn loose, and I would really like it if this pegged in a little better. Eh, not that big a deal. It really isn't. Overall, this is one of my... Overall, this is a pretty solid figure. It's not perfect, but it's pretty solid. Next up, we're going to take a look at Dino Blue, a.k.a. the Brontosaurus, or Apatosaurus, I should say. Brontosaurus. I, I think it's the Brontosaurus that doesn't actually exist. Anywho, it's a giant Apatosaurus. Yeah. Another prime comparison. Yes, I keep switching between Earthrise and Bumblebee Movie. They're the same height. Who cares? And yes, this one is big enough that Prime can easily ride it. He's blue. Babadee, babadai. Babudee, babudai and there's a little robot kibble underneath. All right, transformation. This is going to go a little bit weird because parts of this showed up broken, uh, specifically this flap, which I can probably just re-glue it. So we'll just kind of go ahead and start pulling pieces apart. Oh, shoot. So pulled the, <laughs> pulled the tail off, which then popped the back part of the dinosaur off. This is supposed to come off. And then the dino head will flip back there, pull these sections apart, disconnect them, and then flip out the, that part of the dino, and then flip the legs around, like so. And then we can stand the figure up and flip the dinosaur legs around the shoulders. Oh, that's snapping. Oof. That really is scary, but it, it, I don't think it's going to break. And then the head is really supposed to do that, but makes the figure real back heavy, which I'll get to in a little bit. And that was pretty much it. The last thing we are going to do is give him some, or give him a weapon and a shield. So this bit will actually fold up and then around and it will become a shield for his one arm. You could see the little handle in there that he can grab onto. And then finally we've got some Dinobot, Beast Wars Dinobot action happening here where this whole thing opens up and becomes a, a kind of pinwheel-esque spinning weapon though it doesn't work all that well. So, yeah. And here we have Dino Blue. He's got just a, a ton of dinosaur bits hanging off of him. I really do like the, the look of this thing, except his face. Well, we'll get to that in a sec. Yeah, it's, it's a nicely painted, nice-looking figure. Though the face is very derp. Derp. It's got a very derpy face. Overall... Pretty good. I like it. Except for uh, some of the joints, which we'll talk about in a second. I would have loved the weapon to actually freely spin, but it could just spin in his hand. And it reminds me both of Dinobot, or Beast Wars Dinobot's weapon. It also reminds me of the weapon that Gundam X used. I can't remember the name of it. It was that weird shield thing. But he has the added bonus of this folding up and becoming a lance. So that is cool. 
All right, posability for this guy. Head is on a ball joint, so it's got a lot more movement than red did. Can look down that much, can look up that much. Shoulders are ratcheted for in and out, or for forward and back, and then a hinge for in and out. Bend at the elbow, fists do rotate. No torso articulation, but legs ratchet, and then hinge for in and out, swivel, and then the knees that bend the wrong direction because it's just the way the figure transforms. So the knees are the problem, even though they are ratchets, they are not the tightest of ratchets. And I'm really worried that they're gonna break at some point, but the figure's heavy. There's no getting around it. The entire mass is stored on the back and on the shoulders. So the rest of the figure is just chunky and heavy. And I swear that chest is from the heavy arms. Anyway, the dino head also peeking out the back is silly, or you could just have it folded down and, ha ha, I can see between my legs. Okay, that's, that's just wrong. Anyway, it's fine. It's fine. There's nothing really wrong here other than I'm worried that the ratchets won't last. Size-wise, here are the same players that we were looking at before, except um, don't have Earthrise Prime. I've got Studio Series Bumblebee Prime. Next up is the Triceratops, which I think has the weakest of the alt modes. Uh, I don't like the fact that the seam is gigantic right down the middle of the face. I think that the chunk that's showing up in the back of the via or the vehicle mode of the dino mode is a little bit much. And eh, it, I don't know why. It just doesn't do anything for me the way the others do. Though I do respect the color choice, the orange and yellow and with the brown, I, I actually kind of dig that. It's fully rideable by Prime also. See, what did I tell you? Though Prime does look like he's just about to fall off any second. Our boy's transformation is a little bit different. Uh, we'll start off by just ripping off his tail and then turning the, the tail into the weapon mode. This is supposed to be a hammer, believe it or not. Then we can unpeg or pull off the back flanks. And these sections do some interesting twisting and turning so that the legs get formed. So I'll do that again. Flip out the leg, turn it 180 degrees, extend it, and then flip the foot out, and then fold the whole section over the dino leg, and that will peg into place. So the whole thing can stand up, and then we just pretty much fillet the dino, the rest of the dino mode. So start off by coming to the back here and pulling these panels apart, and that's kind of all that these will do. I wanted to say that they will open up or slide away from the figure, but they don't. And then grab the dino head and just pull it apart and start moving bits around so that we can then come inside and pull, push up the head, which is pushed up by this little bit right here. And then the inner dino bits will wrap around the arms and fold the heads down and flip up the front legs behind the heads. And that's it. That's the transformation. We're done. In terms of the overall color scheme, I'd say this is the most vibrant. The blue, white, and yellow, and orange are crazy bright. I kind of dig it. The head is much too small for the rest of the body, and also, for some reason, the face is not painted. I don't know why this one didn't get a paint job on the face. It would have worked if it was, mm, I don't know, brown for the face, or, you know, some paint. That would have been nice. The overall aesthetic works, though. It's gaudy as heck, don't get me wrong. It is completely gaudy as heck, and he actually stands better than all of them, even though he's got slightly floppy knees. But it, it kind of works. It's so stupid, it actually works. And then here's his hammer. Posability on this guy is the worst out of all of them, I think. Head is on a ball joint, though it only has very limited up and down movement, but it can swivel. There's ratcheting in the shoulders, and then a hinge, and then there's very little in-to-out movement of the actual arm. The elbow can bend, but it can't bend all the way unless you do kind of like an untransformation of the arm. Then it can bend all the way, but otherwise the dino chunks get in the way. Leg is the kind of ratchet that I'm terrified to actually move because it sounds like it's going to break. 
and then a hinge for in and out, a swivel, and ratcheting knees that are very, very tight. So yeah, definitely the most gaudy and weirdest proportioned of the bunch, but it's not that bad actually. Yet another size comparison. You can see how well he scales to the Transformers of the day. He is definitely the widest of all of the bots in this dino set though. And last but by no means least is the T-Rex, the green dino red, and oh, I'm sorry, the Triceratops was dino yellow. Yeah, it uh, it's a T-Rex, and it actually feels kind of small compared to the other guys. Can Prime ride him? Yes, but it's tenuous, and it looks completely non-correct to scale. Oh well. In this form, Dino Green does have some articulation. The Dino arms can move and bend, and the Dino mouth opens with no problem, revealing some nice painted chompers. And then his uh, feet can articulate, and his ankles can, and his legs can collapse like this. So he could actually sit cross-legged if he wanted to. Okay, not really. Transformation for this guy is interesting. Very interesting. So we'll start by just kind of grabbing the rear legs and opening up the panels and then kind of separating the panels and come to the tail, pull the tail off, move that off to the side, and then grab these back panels and split them open and they will fold down to form the feet. I think it's obvious by now. Now you want to reach in and flip out the toes and that. Ah, come back here. Like that. And then close it up, but then collapse this section in to form the heels, and then the dino feet will do the same. So we'll do that on the other side, close it back up, collapse that section to form heels, and then fold the dino foot in. And you can collapse the dino toes, I choose not to. And then just situate the legs so that the figure can stand up. Next, come to the top of the dino and grab the snout and split the dino head open. Get the arms kind of out of the way. Fold these panels up like that. And then open them out. Oh, forgot about these panels. Fold those out, fold the arms down, and then come to the back and grab this little section here, and you're supposed to push up to push up the robot head. What we are actually supposed to do is grab that and pull it all the way out, and then push it up, and it'll lock into place, but it doesn't really want to, so I just push it up and then grab the dino head and pull it out, and that's pretty much it, except for the weapons, so we'll talk about that in a second. Now, Dino Green is definitely the thinnest of all of them, and I think the coloring works really well. And then you get the giant yellow up at the shoulders, which is just weird. I would have preferred it to keep the green and maybe some red, not orange. The head sculpt is good, but I would have loved to have seen the face plate painted again, or painted at all at this in this case. I actually really like the face and the head sculpt going on here. It, Reminds me more of something from Mega Man X than actually a, a dinosaur robot. So the tail splits apart into these two weapons, and I have been trying to figure out how to get our dino boy to actually wield them. The directions I have aren't clear. It just says literally connect it. There's nowhere to connect it to. There's nothing to actually peg into here, so... I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do with this. It's almost as if the hands are supposed to go in there, but the section is much too small. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, posability. Head is on a ball joint, though. Anywho, posability. Head is on a swivel. Ratchets in the shoulder. Hinge. Another hinge. And then an elbow, no fist articulation, legs, ratchet, swivel, bend at the knee. Knee, ratchets, a little bit on the loose side, swivels way on the loose side, but otherwise, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. And as you can see, we've got another tall boy among us here. 
Overall, I really like these four dinos. They are a lot of fun and definitely worth adding to your collection. Now, I will be doing a review separately of the little deluxe class Ankylosaurus, and I'm probably going to try to get a hold of the other three because I really like this set and I really want these figures smaller also. This is a weird case where I'd like both the larger and the smaller figures. I think these are a lot of fun. So if you're interested in picking these figures up, head down to my description. There's a link down there. Also, while you're down there, follow me over on Patreon, because I could not do these reviews without my Patreon supporters. And thank you for watching. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and be sure to follow me on Twitter and here on YouTube. Again, thank you so much for watching. I have been Wall Matrix, and I'll catch you next time.